who was a highly respected individual that died that was later revealed years later to be a monster. What did they do? The Comte de Mirabeau was a national hero of the French Revolution at the time of his death in 1791, right as that whole thing was really getting going. Even the Jacobins loved him. About a year after his state funeral at the Pantheon, it was revealed that not only had he been in the secret employ of Louis XVI, the king they were about to behead, but the Austrian Habsburgs too. He was basically acting as a sort of triple agent against the revolution. To this day historians are sharply divided on his legacy. It's no Jimmy Savile but at the time this was seen as a hugely scandalous betrayal. Eventually his remains were removed from the Pantheon to be buried anonymously and they've never been found since. People are so complicated. This is TV show material. Marion Zimmer Bradley. Huge Seafy fantasy writer in the 70s onward. After she died in 1999 her and her husband's children came forward about the years of sexual abuse they endured throughout their childhood from the two of them. Really fricked up. Well frick. Till. The adoption agent to the stars. Georgia Tan. Was highly respected adoption agent who worked with many prominent people including several Hollywood stars. It turned out she was literally kidnapping some of the children and selling them to rich people. Also suspicion lingers that she may have let some children die of neglect or lack of medical treatment if they weren't the type of child her clients wanted. The podcast criminal did a really good episode about this. She would have women pose as nurses and kidnap the babies. Telling the mothers that they died. So heartbreaking to hear some of the stories of what she got away with. I went to community college with the stepdaughter of a once highly esteemed police chief of a town a few over from my own. He was quietly retired all of a sudden years before and once I found out she was his stepdaughter I told her I knew her stepfather had died pretty recently, like within the last few months, and that I was sorry. Oh boy, did she have a story for me. When she was 9 years old, her mother married her stepfather and he almost immediately started sneaking into her room at night to rape her. This lasted until she was 15 and finally told her mother, who wouldn't believe her? She started telling guidance counselors and even a doctor and finally something was done. The PD, and surprisingly, tried to cover it up at first. This was their highly decorated and respected police chief. Sadly my fellow student had no proof. It was just he said she said and in the end, her stepfather just resigned to avoid media attention. Other than that, no charges were filed. He never really got into any trouble. She went to live with an aunt and uncle until she was old enough to move out. Her mother never took her side and remained married to the son of a bee until he died. The emotion in her voice convinced me she was telling the truth and a quick search did uncover the police chief who mysteriously resigned out of the blue when she would have been 16 and was trying to have her story told. It was all very hush hush and I don't think anyone knows what really happened, which is a shame. A girl I was dating told me that her mother would tell her to find some place to be when her stepfather was home alone with her. I don't think he ever did anything, but dang. Cyril Smith MP, for Rochdale, after his death, numerous allegations of child sexual abuse by Smith emerged, leading the police to believe that Smith was a serial sex offender. The allegations turned out to be true. Dr. Hans Asperger. The name alone should explain what contributions he made to the field of medicine. Earlier this year, it turned out that he was a little Nazi who personally sent over 800 innocent children to Hitler's death camps. A true monster in every sense of the word. Seriously, this is the first time I'm hearing about anything like this about Asperger's. Good grief. Jimmy Savile. He did loads for charity, and he was considered a household treasure by many. There was even a big argument between those of us in Scarborough and people in Leeds over where he should be buried. We were saying our town because he spent a lot of time here, and Leeds wanted him buried in theirs because it was his birth town. In the end we won, but I doubt Leeds are too unhappy about that now. It later transpired that far from the kindly gentleman image many of us had thought of as Jimmy Savile. He was actually a disgusting pedophile whose actions had been covered up by the BBC. He was getting the ratings, so they had to protect him. What made it even worse was that the BBC commissioned a number of tribute shows for Jimmy Savile and even a revival of one of his shows, Jim will fix it. They knew all about what he did, and yet they still wanted to honor him for his TV work. 
I had never heard of this guy until tonight and this is the third mention I have seen so far. Absolutely disgusting and glad I wasn't aware of him. John Wayne Gacy was very well respected in his community and no one could believe it when they found out he kidnapped, tortured, raped, and murdered young men and boys until the bodies started leaving out from beneath and around his home. His wife didn't even know. Jimmy Savile. He dipped his dong in legit anything that he wasn't supposed to. Kids, little kids, dead bodies, animals, you name it, if it was a being, Jimmy Savile pretty banged it. Straight rapist butt bowl. All anything with the backbone Savile. Truly wretched scum. We had a cop that used to come to your elementary school and teach you about everything. Fire safety and cyber safety and looking both ways before you cross the road. I even remember him teaching us about how you don't touch another person's private parts. When I was in high school, a girl came out saying he had raped her. I don't completely know the outcome because it was pushed down but he was no longer coming to school and I don't find anything that indicates he's still with the police. He was really a hero to a lot of kids and what he did was so pushed down that I don't think many people even know about it. John Foster Dulles, US Secretary of State under Eisenhower, was highly respected when he died. It wasn't until several Freedom of Information Act filings later that people started to understand in just how big a role he played in such things as the overthrow of Iran's democratically elected leader in 1953, his role in United Fruit and the Banana Wars, US involvement in Vietnam, etc. Edward Teller decided atomic bombs were not world endy enough and so invented the hydrogen bomb. Then he threw the guy, J. Robert Oppenheimer, who built the atomic bomb and won World War II under the bus as a communist during McCarthy's Red Scare and ruined his career as a scientist, then gave the plans for the hydrogen bomb to the Soviets, unintentionally, because he was an idiot. Teller was a piece of crap. Rolf Harris, beloved comedian, artist, Hosted a show about vets helping animals and seemed to be sweet and caring. Repeat sex offender. I couldn't believe it when the news first broke. Mother Teresa was pretty awful. Maybe not a monster but pretty awful. She was little more than a religious zealot. Her hospital was found to have people in horrific conditions. Needles were washed under taps and reused so often they became blunt. Staff had no or minimal medical training. They couldn't even differentiate between dying people and those with curable illnesses. She took pride in getting people to convert while on their deathbeds. She thought suffering brought people closer to God, so there was no, or minimal, pain management. They were less hospitals than a place to give up and die. Also vast amounts of donations went missing, and are still unaccounted for. It was all about converting as many people as possible, not about helping anyone. There's a reason pride is considered the worst and original sin which leads to all the other sins. People may start out, or seem to start out, with good intentions, but their narcissism will corrupt them in the end. Also as a very conservative Catholic she had an extreme no never view on abortion, including when young girls were raped. But that's a different issue. All this is made even worse in my opinion where, despite her beliefs that suffering brings you to God she chose to have her heart issues treated in an expensive hospital in the US. There's a story somewhere that once when picking up grocery supplies for her hospital, she refused to leave the line unless someone else paid the bill for her. $800. These were not wealthy areas. Honoring her with a sainthood is ludicrous. She represents some of the very worst aspects of the Catholic Church. I am surprised no one mentioned Morris Wilkins, working against Rosalind Franklin's by working secretly with Watson and Crick. He was a T that took all the work of Rosalind on DNA structure and did so because he was working for a woman. Just came back from vacations and during my stay, one night at a club I met these guys from Belgium who were genetic engineers. While nerding out on genetics with one, he mentioned this Rosalind madam which surprised me. Yeah, while Wilkins isn't a monster, that's a dong move to pull off. Doctor, Seuss cheated on his wife while she had cancer which ultimately led to her suicide. He wasn't a fan of children. He drew racist World War II propaganda. He advertised oil and pesticides. His first book was the pocket book of boners. As a condition to his contract to write children's books he first wanted to make a book about naked ladies. I wouldn't say he was a monster but there is a lot of docker stuff behind the man who wrote the uplifting children's books.
Admittedly for the racist stuff he eventually realized how bad it was. Horton hears a who was even written specifically because of his realization that his propaganda comics during the war were very racist. King Jellybean. They destroyed the photo evidence. It was better that we remember him for the Jellybean he represented, not for the Jellybean he actually was. Hi, I'm Mr. Boobibla. I'll buy those boobies for 25 schmeckles. Mother Teresa. The sad part is Catholics still worship her. She was a cruel human being. Just some examples of the fricked up, vile crap she did. Coercing people on their deathbeds into converting to Catholicism and bragged about it. Refused to give proper medical care to people at her institutions. Doctors who visited were horrified at the conditions and treatment people received. Tuberculosis patients weren't quarantined. The people providing medical care to patients at her institutions weren't even doctors. Just volunteers who had no idea what they were doing and would reuse needles that weren't sterilized. She had raised about $2.50 million. Yet at her institutions there were shortages on food and painkillers. She would talk about how abortion is just as bad as letting the poor children in India die. Yet even with all of her money, she'd offer those children prayers instead of food. She was also a raging racist white supremacist. She target non-whites and was vehemently against divorce and would lead rallies protesting it. Of course, if you were white and rich it was a different story. She supported Princess Diana's divorce yet tried to make it illegal in Ireland. Nellie McClung. Canadian suffragette that is famous for being a part of movement for women's rights in Canada. Also, a staunch support of eugenics. So much so that she wrote multiple essays on the subject, endorsing sterilization, segregation, and euthanasia. My local example would be Phyllis Schlafly, relatively unknown but her own breed of deranged, the woman who lobbied successfully against the Equal Rights Amendment. She is also quoted saying this as it pertains to a husband raping his wife. By getting married, the woman has consented to sex, and I don't think you can call it rape. Not really a monster, but Ayn Rand corresponded and admired a convicted child murderer. She would refer to him as a Nietzschean superman. B.T. Barnum, aka the one who created the greatest show, Circus. He was portrayed as a hero to cheer for in the film, but in reality was a disgusting man. He had a very old female slave, and he put her in the freak show portion of the circus for people to look at. She was deaf old, blind, and paralyzed. When she died he had people pay to see her autopsy. There's also Alexander Graham Bell. He was known for creating the telephone, but it was recently found that he stole the blueprints from Tesla. Tesla was the one who figured out the science, and drew out a plan. Graham took the plan and the next day Tesla saw his blueprints in the paper with Graham's name on it. Many people don't give Tesla the credit of creating the telephone. Bell isn't much liked by the deaf, either. He worked really hard to wipe out ASL and force the deaf to be like hearing people. I just learned about this today, but a woman called Elizabeth Holmes was a respected entrepreneur because she was going to revolutionize how fast blood testing would be. She was given millions of dollars because she kept promising to release the machine which would quicken blood testing. She kept up the facade until she got a spotlight and was praised for her work. But in reality, all she was doing was lying, and having fake tests in order to prove the lies. But one day, WSJ made an article about her and things came crashing down from there. She eventually was caught. If any of you want to provide more info, that would be greatly appreciated BC I know I skipped a lot. She's not dead. Ugh. I hate this. My grandpa was an amazing drummer. He was a legend in high school and Gene Krupa told my grandpa he had a better left hand than him. We buried my grandpa with drumsticks in his hands and an ace comb in his back pocket. He was supposed to go on a TV show as a kid but his parents never let him which led him to live a life with such anger. But he was such a badass drummer. He was such an inspiration for my music as a kid. I found out why my mom was so avoidant about everything and why my uncle hates everything in life. My grandpa was a pharmacist who would steal pills and was so abusive he even threw my mom's cat out of a second story window and it thankfully lived. But what the heck? My grandma said she stayed for 20 years because she knew that if it were her, she wouldn't want someone to leave her. But then they finally split but it was so bad. 
The first person to come to mind is Albert Speer. He crafted an image as the good Nazi. He portrayed himself as regretful of the regime and unaware of the horrors occurring. He was fully aware though and there were records uncovered of him ordering a Jewish people to be evicted from their homes. Total jerk. He is still alive. Bill Clinton is a monster. He is a serial rapist. He raped one of his volunteers twice and then bit her lips so hard, he nearly took a chunk off. His wife then threatened the poor woman into staying silent. Clinton served this woman years after the fact. He had the IRS audit her. When he was running for president, he suddenly showed up at a conference she was attending. He pretended to apologize cause he was cleaning out the closet before his run. He also arranged for her to get a job on some government committee or something, to bribe her. Came here to say Jimmy Savile and see that he's getting top honors, if one can call it that. For crap human being of the century, it's one of the few times I've ever really hoped there is a heck and he's in it. Okay, just kidding I've wished heck on lots of people, but I can't think of few who deserve it more than him. Gustavo Fring, a man from Chile who came to America and started a fast food restaurant chain called Los Polos Hermanos. He was a well respected man in his community and hosted many charities. He unexpectedly got blown up in a nursing home and it was later discovered that he was the kingpin one of the largest drug empires in the world. He was the leader of an enormous drug cartel which specialized in the production and distribution of methamphetamine. Holy crap that's fascinating. They should make a movie or show about him. Charlie Chaplin the comedian who repeatedly raped and married his 13 year old cousin then raped some more for shoots and giggles. Carl Harold also known as you Carl, who was a really helpful redditor teaching people about programming and even giving life advice to people who approached him about it. He was found hanged dead in jail after committing 10 counts of child p and holding his child captive for 2 years. An aboriginal bloke who helped the community act had a diversion center named after them. Years after his death it was outed he was a PRophile and rapist. Center's name was changed real fast. P.L. Travers, the author of Mary Poppins did a lot of terrible things that they left out of the Tom Hanks movie. She only adopted one boy in a set of identical twins and never told her son that he was adopted or had a twin brother. He found out years later when he ran into his twin at a bar. Mahatma Gandhi, if I remember correctly, the dude slept with naked women, even underage women, just to see if he'd be aroused. Great in message, but not in sex life. Jameson Whiskey founder, paid to have an African child sacrificed by cannibals, witnessed it and painted it, rumored to have indulged on her flesh after she was cooked. That wasn't the founder, it was his great grandson, so like four generations later, I'm glad Bill Cosby has lived as long as he has. J. Edgar Hoover was later revealed to be a total monster. Hitler had a lot of respect, even when the world declared war on him. Turns out he died just before it became widespread knowledge just how bad he was. Father Maciel in Mexico, a high ranking priest that was beloved by a lewd of people. Then he died and turns out he was a major pedo. Heck they even made movies about it. Jimmy Savile. An old celebrated UK celebrity turned out to be a massive pedophile. There is a Louis Theroux documentary on him. John Lennon isn't quite the warrior prince of peace and love he's often thought to be. He wrote some amazing music and channeled the mood of a generation. He also abused both his wives, abandoned his first son, and was a rage addict. None of us are perfect but he's often hailed as some kind of mid-century icon of peace and moral virtue. I'm a big fan of Lennon's music but he was at a best a pseudo-intellectual. He often wrote on subjects that he had very little understanding of like Tamori will never knows. George famously called John out for not having a clue what the Tibetan Book of the Dead was about, and made these generalizations such as stopping war or everyone being nice. Nice calls but nothing much deeper. Juwario. As far as I know, his sexual assault allegations are still just allegations saying this point, but there is an overwhelming number of people who knew him who side with the accusers. Joseph Stalin, Che Guevara, Mao, all the communists, they were revered as celebrities until they were gone. Stalin was a paranoid nut job who killed people if they made jokes about his mustache. 
Che was a racist and a homophobe who killed innocents, and Mao was a PR-file who ruined an entire nation with an immense history. As for me, wrote at the age of 73, I collect pets, young girls, girls from 10 to 16 years old, girls who are pretty and sweet and naive and innocent, dear young creatures to whom life is a perfect joy and to whom it has brought no wounds, no bitterness, and few tears, Mark Twain. Important to note that Mark Twain was a heavy user of sarcasm and satire, singular quotes are often misleading. Alfred Hitchcock was a malicious prankster whose pranks bordered on sociopathic cruelty. He locked one of his actresses in a room full of birds to make her fear on screen more authentic, pretty sure she ended up hospitalized. He once mailed a little girl a coffin containing a wax replica of her mother. One time he made a dare with a stagehand that the guy would stay in the studio overnight. He handcuffed the guy to a piece of equipment, gave him a drink for courage and then left. What he didn't tell the guy was that the drink was spiked with the most powerful laxative on the market. The next day people found him dehydrated and crying in a puddle of his own crap. There were many more pranks like this. Joe Paterno. His name was synonymous with college football in America, coached over 60 years and had an extremely decorated coaching career over the span of his life. Had one of his assistants that was knowingly having sexual relationships with young kids and he just completely disregarded and ignored the entire thing. Joe Paterno was a guy who was the epitome and definition of legacy and he just completely disregarded and allowed one of the most heinous acts imaginable happening right under his nose. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.